Hi all, welcome to the Mind School. Last month was the highest increase in consumer prices in four decades. Food costs continued to climb and onion prices were up 130% from last year. But the story behind the rise in onion prices is not just an inflation story. See, onions are not your average produce. Their prices are actually more likely to fluctuate widely because they have high price volatility. Why? We will try to find an answer to this question. Onion farmers are always at the mercy of the weather and the soil and the plants during the growing season. And then, after they harvest the crop, they are at the mercy of financial markets to buy the onions. Except for this one time when another farmer from upstate New York broke all the rules and made himself the master of onions and the master of the markets. He was known as the Onion King of Pine Island. His name is Vince Kosuga. At one point, Vince Kosuga held the entire onion world hostage and he made a fortune doing it. I will tell you just what it took for Vince Kosuga to become the onion king and why his neighbors still resent it. Vince Kosuga started out as an onion farmer back in the 1930s and he was pretty successful at it. But onion farming was never quite enough for him. After he had finished working on his crops, he liked to make big bets on other people's crops. He would pour his onion money into what is called the futures trading market. For farmers, futures market are a way of taking some of the risk out of their business. For example, farmers can agree to lock in a price of $9 a bag. You have sold a contract to deliver the onions in the future, but you get the money now. If in the fall the price goes down to $6 a bag, who cares? They are logged in at $9. But you trade futures even if you are not a farmer. There is a wall exchange in Chicago where they do it. If you just know in your heart that the price of onions is going to go up, you can buy a futures contract when the price is low. You can sell it when the price is high. You can make a fortune or lose one like Vince Kozuga did early on. When he first started out, he was trading wheat and got annihilated. He had to mortgage part of his farm. He thought, hey, I know about onions, I know about futures trading, but if I use that knowledge to pull off the greatest onion trade that the world has ever seen. In 1955, he decides that he is going to corner the onion market. Cornering the onion market means that Vince Kozuga needs to get his hands on virtually all of the onions in America and he has to figure out where to put them. So his evil plan starts in New York with a little construction project. Well, he was building a big shed of corrugated aluminium and he was filling it with onions. So he was stockpiling all the onions from his farm. And he is not just doing it on his own farm. All around the country, Wynn starts buying up onions, millions of them throughout the United States. Vince has to do all this completely in secret because if he does not and the market finds out what he is up to, the price will go up before he has a chance to buy all the onions. And after he starts stockpiling onions, he starts buying all the future contracts so that he can control all the onions that are growing now. It's like saying to farmers, as soon as those onions come out of the ground, I want them. I want to buy them. Vince and his partner Sam started buying all the available future contracts in onions. By the time fall of 1955 rolled around, Vince Kozuga has wrapped up the entire market. So he owned all the longs in futures market and he owned all the onions in United States. And he cornered the market. Vince wanted the price to go up. He keeps the onions off the market. He creates an onion shortage. And then, when the price is high enough in December of 1955, Vince and Sam called in a bunch of onion bigwigs, growers, distributors, all to a meeting in Chicago. They say, fellows, this can go one of two ways. You can buy a bunch of our onions at a price that we demand, or we can just dump all these onions on the market all at once. We can destroy the price of onions for the rest of the year. It's your call. They didn't really have a choice. In the end, 
they agreed to buy almost 9 million pounds of Kozuga's onions. He made a killing. And if Vince had stopped there, he would have been an absolute legend. Kozuga did not stop there. He didn't just want to make a killing. He sees that he can make two killings. He has such a powerful hold on America's onion supply. And there is the second opportunity to make money. If you control all of America's onions, you can make the price go up, which he did. But you can also make the price go down. And he thinks about this. And there is a way in the futures market that you can basically short the market. You can make a big bet that the price will go down. And once again, Vince Kozuga can make the price go down. So he starts to quietly make bets against the price of onions. That the price will go down. And he is making these bets day after day after day. And when March hits, Vince Kozuga springs his second trap. He stabs his fellow farmers in the back and he flirts the market with onions. But with all these onions coming into Chicago, the price falls through the floor. Onion became basically worthless. No one wants to get stuck with Kozuga's onions. Traders tried to get rid of as many onions as they could and the rest of them they dumped in the Chicago River. And of course, there was one man who made a huge financial bet that the price of onions would drop to nothing. And that man was Vince Kozuga. He made a fortune. He made around $8.5 million. There's a lot of money in 1955. And a lot of people took a beating on Vince Kozuga's onion corner. People went bankrupt because of Kozuga. There were stories of suicides. Onion farmers were really upset. They brought up the issue in Congress. Congress listened to the farmers and in 1958, Eisenhower signs the Onion Futures Act which makes it illegal to trade onion futures in America. And to this day, you cannot trade futures in onions. And it is the only agriculture product that is specifically outlawed like this. The only one. You can trade in soybeans, wheat, corn, no problem. But onions, forget it. And so farmers theoretically should live happily ever after. No speculators to mess around in the market. Except for one thing, not much change in the onion market. The price of onions would still unexpectedly shoot up and crash down without warning. Just like it always did. Even without Vince Gozuga, onion farmers still face the prospect of making a bunch of money one year and losing it all the next. If a farmer cannot sell his onions ahead of time, he has to pay to store them. It costs farmers money. It costs you money when you are buying onions. You could not corner the onion market today and not because of what Congress did, not because of the law, but because there is so much information in the market. If you try to buy up a ton of corn or soybeans, I mean, first of all, everyone would know you are out there buying. And secondly, people would see you building the warehouses. And we have just so much information about the futures market, you would see someone like Vince Kozuga coming in my away. Why futures markets are so important and what happens when there is not one? Futures market offers some pretty important functions. Futures market is to allow for price discovery. Basically, a futures market lets people with knowledge of the market trade in that good. And by trading, people reveal what they think prices should be. A futures market allows farmers to hedge against the chance of lower prices in the future and that lets them invest more in the farm today, like get new machinery or plant more. These two functions of a futures market, price discovery and risk management, make for a healthier market. But onions, they have to get by without futures. What it ultimately means is a less efficient market and typically less efficiency translates to higher prices. And that is what the research shows. A study from Professor David S. Jacks in Explorations in Economic History says, futures markets are associated with and most likely cause lower commodity price volatility. So no futures market, more price volatility. Which is all to say, even decades later, Vince Kosuga still has his fingerprints on the swings of onion prices.